You know, I think um, I have had a, uh, a love affair with the game of football my entire life. You know, growing up as a kid, watching my dad play and um, and being able to uh, be intimate and close with the Miami Dolphins when I was growing up um, and seeing all aspects of the game, all aspects of a team, um, and then playing the game uh, in high school and college and then professionally. Um, and when I got done, uh, playing, I thought about coaching, but my kids were really young and I didn't want to move all over the country and have to move them uh, and my wife as well. Um, and that was when I kind of just took an interest in television. I thought, well, I'll, I'll give it a try and see how it, how it works. And I uh, really enjoyed that and it gave me the freedom to stay and live in one place. Uh, I lived in Denver for 25 years, and, um, and but still be tied to the game and uh, and still communicate and talk with coaches and players around the country, both in college and in the NFL. Um, and I really enjoyed that. Um, and I really enjoyed leading a group of people, um, which was our crew, which we had over 150 or so people on Monday Night Football. And I enjoyed the leadership aspect of that. And um, But I got to a point, I did it for 13 years, and, and I got to a point um, where um, it didn't, f I, I needed a new challenge. And um, that coupled with the moment where ESPN decided to go in a different direction, I'm not saying they didn't, uh, but they, they, they got a bigger fish, and I understand the dynamics of that. Um, and I always knew that that possibility and probably likelihood was out there. But I did get to do it at the highest level um, for two years, and I loved every minute of it. Um, and so um, I had a decision to make at that point, um, and this opportunity came up, and it was a challenge that I wanted to run towards and not away from. And um, I'm excited about it. I'm rejuvenated uh, by the opportunity to get back in the arena and to compete, to win and to lose and to lead, um, and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Um, and that's a real um, gift, honestly, um, that uh, I'm very fortunate and grateful for um, and going to seize the opportunity and run with it. What is it about the idea of coaching Trey Lance in particular that excites you? Well, first and foremost, you know, I was excited about coaching. You know, I had nothing to do with Trey. Um, just I wanted to be a part of, like I said, something bigger than myself and, and to be a part of a team and to win and to lose. Um, and I've known Kyle for a long time, almost 25 years. And so knowing him and the character, uh, his family, um, you know, uh, that, that played a big role in, in it. I wasn't just going to take any job. Um, with respect to Trey in particular, like meeting him, um, and getting to know him over the last several months, um, you know, he is an outstanding young man uh, in so many ways. Um, and I'm excited to continue to get to know him, uh, both on and off the field. Um, I'm excited that he comes to work every day and he's humble and he wants to get better. And I, I view it the same way. I have my entire life, you know, whether I've been playing or broadcasting or now being a coach, I'm gonna come here with humility and we're gonna get better together. Um, and we check the ego at the door. Uh, and he does that uh, every single day he comes to work, um, and that gives him a chance to be successful. Um, the same with Nate Sudfeld and Brock Purdy, to be totally honest with you. Um, everybody has come to the meeting room every day and the practice field every day um, wanting to get better, and, um, and there's a lot of humility in that. John, when you start when he came out of the broadcast booth to become GM, talked about the missing of the competition and how important yeah. he wanted to get. How much of a factor was that for you? And just be able to get back and be competing and do things different than obviously TV is. Yeah, there's no winning and losing right. after the game is done on a TV mm -hmm. broadcast, you know. Um, talk with John a little bit about that. I've talked with people um, a lot about, you know, how do you determine whether you did were successful mm -hmm. or not after you call the game, you know. Um, and it's very subjective. And it was very subjective from the other side, who liked who, right. you know, who were the best crews, you know. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to more objectivity in my life, <laughs> and uh, winning and losing is a big part of that. So, so what exactly is coaching like? What have you found it to be like? Did you like, I mean, what kind of experience had you had in the past coaching, whether it was you kids or any other level? I mean, does it seem like you're doing a demonstration speech back in high school or Michigan? What, <laughs> what's this like? No, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever done before. I'm not going to compare it to anything, um, but it feels, um, it feels natural. 
Um, I don't know. You'd have to ask Trey and Nate and, and Brock kind of if it feels natural to them. Um, but I told I told Kyle and I told the entire offensive staff when I came out here to to meet him for the first time. I said, listen, I I know what I know and I know what I don't know, um, and I think they appreciated that I was coming here with no agendas. I don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to you know get to the next coaching job. I'm not trying to leapfrog people. I'm just coming here to see if I could be a good football coach, uh -huh. and um, and I have a lot of experiences and I have a lot of. Of, of relationships uh, that have built up over time and a lot of understanding I like to think of the game uh, and how to play the game from the quarterback position um, and what I'm trying to do on the field is relay some of that to Trey and Nate and Brock but then also kind of give them a sense as to what's around the corner that they might not be able to see both on the field and off the field how to deal with you guys <laughs> Hopefully Trey did well. He did pretty well yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Good. So. Um, you know, that, that is an art form. That did you I, teach him what to say to us? He had a no, great no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I told him what not to say. Because <laughs> I said it when I was his age. I was uh -huh. horrible. I was horrible with the media. And, um, and it was not the way to go. You know, and so I had to learn that. And then when I became a part of the media, I really had to learn that too. And now I'm on the other side, so I keep flip-flopping. Is it more natural for you, the, the, the game film stuff, because you spent so much time in media and watching film, and you're learning what it's like to be in the coaching role on the field, telling them, is that a little different? Is that the harder adjustment? No, no, it's not a hard, I mean, I've, I've been watching film and studying the right. game my whole life. Right, that's what I'm saying. So that yeah. part of it's normal. Yeah. When, when you, okay. no, go ahead. oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Um, when when you took this job or were thinking about this job, how much did you look at Trey, and, and or how much did you just want to come in with a fresh set of eyes and what I see is going to form the opinions that I've that I you know have Trey, and frankly I know it's been a very short period of time, but on the yeah. field, what has he taught you or what have you learned about him on the field? Well, when I, to your first question, you know, when I took the job, I only had like two or three days <laughs> where I had to make a decision, so I didn't look at Trey at all. Um, you know, I had conversations with, with Kyle about, about Trey and the kind of person he was. That's what I was most interested in, honestly. Um, I can watch the tape and make my own opinion on, on what I think he does well. Um, and, and my opinions are my own. You know, I don't make an opinion. I, I made that really clear doing television work. You know, my, my opinion is not going to be based on somebody else's opinion. Um, and so since I've been here, I've had the chance to, to dig in on Trey and, and talk with him about how he sees himself and talk with Kyle about how he sees him and, and what the future looks like for him here. Um, so and I've enjoyed that process uh, immensely. Um, you know, Trey's 22. I think he just turned 22 yep. years old. Mm -hmm. He's actually only seven years older than my daughter. So, <laughs> like, uh, he's a lot closer to, you know, my, my kid's age than he is my age, you know. Um, so I'm learning about him, too, and how he learns, and Nate as well, uh, and now Brock, and um, a different generation, which has been really fun and exciting for me to understand how they learn, how they process, how they retain information, how they go out and... and apply that information in real time has been fun and finding different ways to do that for different players and different learning styles um, I have been really enjoyed getting to work with Clay honestly he is an excellent football coach um, who has a background obviously with his dad I had a relationship with his dad he was my first mentor in professional football um, and so I've known Clay since he was a teenager. Um, and, and I'm so proud of him and, and what he's doing and, and the man he's become, the coach he's becoming um, as, a, as a high school teacher, English teacher and head football coach and now chasing his dream. It's really cool to watch and he's gonna be a phenomenal football coach. He already is a great coach. He's getting better and better. So to have him in the room too um, has been fantastic. Have you, have you had any communication with Garoppolo since you got the job? No, I haven't. One of the things Kyle said at the owners' meetings was that it was going to be a benefit to Trey to have somebody who knew what it was like to have a great game and then go out the next week and throw three or four interceptions. Not that that ever happened to you, but if, oh. if, it did. <laughs> yeah, if there was uh, any question, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you bring to him in that way? I know there's the media side of it, but just the mental ups and downs of, of this position, how much pressure there is on it. Yeah, you know, there's um, there's very few um, positions in sports with more high stress than being a quarterback in the NFL. And, um, and there's no way around it. So 
Um, we don't talk about eliminating or running away from stressful situations. We talk about you know, how are you going to cope? How are you going to manage? Um, because the rough times, the rough waters will come. They come for everybody, no matter who you are. Um, and I think there's a couple of things that, that help manage stress and, and build coping skills, right? One is perspective. And one of the first meetings that we had as a quarterback group, we talked about why we're all here. You know, why do we do this job? Why are we putting ourselves through this? You know, um, is it because, you know, you were just ordained or predestined to be the starting quarterback or the third overall pick and now you're here because everybody tells you this is what you're supposed to do um are you here for the money or are you here for the glory and the fame um or are we here to like i said be a part of something bigger than yourself and to play for your team and to compete and to win um and and to be in the arena uh, are you here for the relationships um are you here to make your family proud like things like that that give perspective that I think it's not so granular when it gets into, you know, you're three and five and everybody's telling you how bad you are. You have to have a, a, a broader lens. And I think that's one thing that's important. The other is those relationships, you know, like who you playing for. Um, and when times get tough, do you have a depth of a relationship with the people in the locker room and the coaching staff and the organization to pull from? Like that helps manage stress in high anxiety situations, and uh, there's no there's no substitute for that for a quarterback. You had the opportunity to meet almost every starting quarterback the last couple of years, talk to all the coaches in the league. What what things did you, were you able to take from that that you can apply for you now as a coach? Like, are there lessons that you learn? Hey, see how different people did it. They all oh, I could take it. I could. Uh, I haven't thought about that before. Absolutely or... nothing from production meetings. Okay. <laughs> you know, like I've been in a lot of production mm -hmm. meetings and, you know, you spend the time and yeah. it's, you know, colloquial yeah. and, and you're just, you know, but you get very little from an XO standpoint. Okay. I take probably, I take more, a lot more from studying trends mm -hmm. and the way that, you know, offenses, defenses are operating. And, and um, so I think some of that will be useful. I noticed when Trey Lance is in the shotgun, he's got a staggered stance with his left foot forward. And last year it was even. I love the details of football. I'm sure it's something you think about. And I was curious sort of why you made the change. We just think it makes it more efficient in the drops. Simple enough. Yeah. Simple.